Now that your IO link kit has arrived, let's talk about mounting options, how to wire it, and doing your initial setup. There are two options for mounting this. It comes with two screws that'll allow you to mount it to the back of the actuator, or it comes with T-nuts. We can simply put those into two of the mounting holes, then slide it down into the aluminum extrusion, and put your end cap on the top of it. Then it comes with three wires. Your blue wire is going to go to the V1 plus. Your white with a blue stripe will go to the V1 minus. And the green will go to the ground symbol. Then on your PLC trainer, the left set of terminal blocks is your plus 24. The right set is your minus. And the green is your ground. So plug the blue wire into the left set of terminal blocks. The white wire into the right set of terminal blocks. And the green wire to the ground. Then take the ethernet cable that comes with it and plug into any available port on your ethernet switch. Now, depending on which generation of our trainer you have, you may only have a five port ethernet switch here. So you may have to upgrade this, but also don't forget that this has two ports on it. So you may be able to unplug one of the other devices and then plug it into here because this kind of acts as a two port ethernet switch also. We've already configured the IP address of your IO link module for 192.168.1.15. And if you happen to be following along with this video to configure your IO link device, it has DHCP enabled by default. You can take our SIM IPE or another DHCP server and assign an address. After that, this is probably the most intuitive module as far as getting it set up. All we're going to do is enter its IP address into your web browser, which is 192.168.1.15. And on the right side, we're going to log in. And the default password is all lowercase password. And it's going to recommend you change this password. And I absolutely recommend you change it. I am going to click no for this. That way it's ready to go when you get it. And there's three things that you're going to need to know how to do on it. First, we can go to the parameter tab. And it's got your IP address right here, just in case you need to change it. And then our input tab, here's where we can see our IO states. And by default, this is set up for just a digital input. But I can stick my hand over input zero, and it works. I can go to channel one. And if you stick your hand over it, it's not going to work because it's an inductive proc switch. So we need something metal to put over it to test it with. And when I stick the screwdriver over it, it's switching. And if we go to channel two, this is a capacitive prox. And if we stick our hand over it, then it switches as well. Now we're going to do some detailed sensor exercises. But the big thing for now is this bottom one, port zero, is an IO link sensor, and we need to enable it. So we're going to go to our local IO parameters, and we're going to select channel zero. And right here, the default configuration is DI. We're going to select IO link without validation and click the right button. And then we go right back to that parameter tab. And now we've got some action on word zero. So if I move my hand near and far, we're seeing that value change. And the third thing you need to know on this is this documentation tab right here. And for the next few videos, we need this Ethernet IP memory map because we're going to need to use input assembly instance of 103 with a size of 103. Output assembly instance of 104 with a size of 67. And we are going to learn about the IIOD configurator tab, but that's enough to get us started. Here's a playlist on how to add this IO link module in Studio 5000 for the Control Logix and Compact Logix PLC, and how to add it to a Micro 850 PLC 